Right, we're moving on to exercise four to six now. So starting off with exercise four, you are converting the word equations into balanced symbol equations. OK, question number one, zinc metal reacts with copper two sulfate solution to produce solid copper metal and zinc sulfate solution. So I'm going to do this first one as an example and then let you guys do the others by yourself. So it says zinc metal reacts with copper two sulfate solution. OK, so zinc, the symbol is Zn. OK, it says it's zinc metal, so it's solid. So let's try putting state symbols in as well now. Uh, so zinc metal reacts with copper two sulfate solution. So if I just do this down here, copper two means it's got a two plus charge. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. Um, and therefore the formula for copper sulfate is um, CuSO4, like that. OK, and they've told you it's a solution. If it's a solution, it means it's dissolved in water. So therefore, the state symbol is aqueous. Um, this then produces solid copper metal. So solid copper metal like that. Um, it's solid, so obviously solid um, state symbol. And it produces zinc sulfate solution. Now, zinc as an iron is always two plus. OK, uh, sulfate two minus. So now the formula for this is ZnSO4. Um, it's just going to come off at the end. So I'm just going to put um, aqueous down here because it tells you zinc sulfate solution. And then you just check if it is balanced. You've got, um, obviously, if you want to write it out, zinc, copper, sulfur and oxygen on both sides. Wrong one. OK, you've got one zinc on that side, one zinc on that side, one copper on that side, one copper on that side, one sulfur on this side, one sulfur on that side, four oxygens on this side, four oxygens on that side. So that one is already balanced. OK, so try uh, attempting questions two uh, to six on the rest of that exercise. I'm going to move on to exercise number five. So in this one, you are doing the calculation of molar mass of compounds. OK, so I just want to cover what we mean by molar mass. Uh, you will have come across this before, just maybe in different um, forms. So molar mass, which we shorten down to capital M subscript R. OK, um, you might have come across this as a relative formula mass. OK, so a relative formula mass um, is where you might have come across it. They both mean the same thing. OK, all you do is you look at the compound. So question number one is H2O. And it's essentially the sum of the atomic masses. OK, uh, so hydrogen. So this is where you need your periodic table. OK, the atomic mass of hydrogen is one in okay, case so the mass number is one um the mass number for oxygen is 16 okay so for water you've got two hydrogens so you do two times one and you've got one oxygen so you just do 16 so that's two and you just do 16 for that and therefore the molar mass or the relative formula mass for water is just 18. OK, I'll do another example of that. So calculating the molar mass or the relative formula mass of, let's go for question number three. So that's ammonia, NH3. OK, um, so you've got hydrogen, which has a mass of one, um, and nitrogen, which has a mass of 14. OK, so now all you do is um, nitrogen is just one of those, so it's 14 plus three lots of hydrogen, so that's three times one, uh, so it's 14 plus three, which is 17. Okay, so that's the relative formula mass, um, the molar mass of ammonia. Um, and you just keep doing that for the rest of the questions as well, just make sure you are using the atomic mass and not the proton number um, for these um, elements. Um, as you keep going, you'll see that they are getting longer. Um, I do just want to cover one where you've got multiple ones. So let's just do 22, which is calcium nitrate. 
Okay, so here calcium is 40, I think, 40.1. Uh, nitrogen is 14, oxygen is 16. Okay, um, you've got one calcium. So that's just going to be 40.1 plus. Um, now, careful, you've got two lots of nitrogen here. So it's going to be 14 times 2, which is 28. And now you've got, um, as you can see, you've got three times two, so six lots of oxygen. Um, so six lots of oxygen is going to be 96. And then you just add those up and that should give you a molar mass of, so this is why you need your calculator. Uh, you don't have to waste time doing it in your head. That is 164.1, okay. Right, moving on to exercise six, you are calculating the number of moles of material in a given mass of that material, okay? Um, and it says that it's using the molar masses of what you calculated in exercise five, and to calculate the number of moles um, to three significant figures, okay? Now, in order to do this, you need to know an equation, which you should have done back at high school. If you haven't, I'll cover it now. So moles equals mass over the molar mass, okay? Mass being in grams, moles, the units is just moles, um, and molar mass is technically um, without units, okay? So um, I'm also just going to put this into a um, triangle form. So you've got mass at the top, moles times MR at the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to keep that there. We're going to use that for... Um, this exercise so I'll just do question number one so nine grams of H2O so calculate the number of moles in nine grams of H2O um, so nine grams is the mass so make sure your mass is always in grams so you do nine divided by um, the molar mass and that's going to give us the moles okay so nine divided by the molar mass of water which is 18 Okay, so 9 divided by 18, uh, you should get 0 0.5 moles. Okay, so remember we write moles, M-O-L, um, as the unit for moles. Okay, and all you do is you apply this equation, mass over MR, um, to get you the, the moles for each of these substances. As I said, make sure that everything is in grams, um, which I think all of these are, so you're okay. Okay, so work through those and see how you get on.